Bismillah, elhamdülillah, salatu wassalamu ala Resulullah. Ala ayyuh sahbihi wa man wala. Today inshallah we go back to the fiqh, the Islamic law session. And we had started the chapter that talks about disease, afflictions, death and burial. This is what they call kitabul janaiz. Janaiz, janaza means funeral. But normally when they talk about this, the funeral, they talk about what precedes the funeral, such as the disease and, um, and of course, uh, the prayer of the, uh, of the funeral and what to do for the deceased and so on. <clears throat> so last time we had read the part that talks about uh, the blessing of having a long life with good deeds. And that... A longer life for the believer only increases and amplifies the good deeds the believer can do and gives him more chance to repent and go back to Allah and correct, correct their mistakes, right? And that it should, uh, the next point was not to uh, wish for death um, and not to ask Allah to enhance or speed your death. But if somebody is in, severe, uh, in a severe trial, where he fears for his religion, then he may ask Allah and say, Oh Allah, if you know that life is better for me, then extend my life. And if you know that death is better for me, then take me back. That's uh, the, you leave it, you leave the choice up to Allah Azza wa Jal. <clears throat> also, the, also the next part was the virtue of being patient at times of hardship and that the best of people, uh, such as the prophets and the righteous people, righteous followers, um, they do go through intense trials, more so than people uh, of a lesser degree of righteousness. The trials are tailored by Allah to the strength of the belief of the, of the person. That's, this is where we stopped. And you will see, alhamdulillah, that uh, Islam has not left any point that relates to life or death, except that it has covered it and it has uh, given the best kind of teachings and etiquettes for every step in the human being life and even death and after death, which you will not find in any, in any other religion. The religion of Islam honors the person live and dying and then dead as well. And after death, there's ruling that apply to the human being in every stage. There's ruling actually that apply to the human being even before he is born by uh, uh, exhorting the, the, the person to find the best mother for the, the best wife, to be the best mother and the raiser for that child and so on. <clears throat> um, the next part in this chapter, the author who is Umm Tamim, uh, she's a very uh, prominent Egyptian uh, lady scholar who teaches uh, fiqh. She, also, she only teaches women actually in Egypt because I know some of the ladies who attend to, uh, her classes. Uh, but she writes books as well, and this is uh, the book I gave an introduction about in the last, in the last uh, lecture. Al-Maridu yuktab lahu ajru ma kana ya'mal wa sahih. The deceased, uh, sorry, the sick person, uh, Allah, out of his mercy, continues to count for that person the good deeds he used to do when he was well and healthy, even though he's not doing them at the, at the time. This applies to the sick person and any person who uh, was affected by any kind of circumstance that prevented him of doing the good deeds that he normally does. Such as, we said that the sick person, who else? Who else Allah gives him the good deeds he was doing? Uh, who else? Uh, the, there's a hadith on this matter. Uh, who else is given the blessing of having uh, written for him good deeds that he's not actually doing now because he was doing them before? The, uh, Huh? He did. Um, the deceased person, that's a, good, that's a good answer, but let me tell you. The deceased person, the regular deeds he was doing, they come to a, uh, an end. The regular good deeds, they come to an end. Except the ones that have an ongoing benefit. Uh, إذا, إذا, إذا Adam, the hadith says, When a human being dies, his deeds, his good deeds come to an end, except for three things. And the three things are actually three examples. And you can 
you can uh, uh, think about other things that apply and fall under these three examples. He says, Sadaqat um, Jariya, a charity that has an ongoing benefit, such as you build something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, and people are still benefiting from this after your death. That's a Sadaqat Jariya. Um, even a tree that you, you know, uh, planted, anything that has an ongoing benefit. Uh, your children who are doing good deeds after you, that's also from your own earning. Because you have made such an effort to raise those children and you paid for the education and you spend the time to teach them and that's your own earning. All these children that you have, that's according to the hadith, the child and his earnings are for his father. Uh, they are the fruit of, of what you have done throughout your life, right? And also he says, which means a knowledge that you have left behind. And that doesn't have to be a book that you've authored. Even if you taught somebody something and that person benefits from it, and then he taught that thing to his children or to his friends, and they continue to benefit. And that is why, for instance, all the knowledge that we are benefiting from are all under the account of the Prophet Muhammad because he was the first teacher for the Ummah and all the Sahaba learned from him and they taught other people and the Prophet Muhammad never actually wrote a book with his own hand, right? <clears throat> you never used to read never or, or be able to write but all the teachings he has given are what we are living with today, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and so on uh, but there are certain people who die also, who die in a state where they have um, basically dedicated their life uh, for the sake of Allah. Such as, uh, there's a hadith that says that a person who goes to the frontier, the edge of the Muslim land to defend from enemies, which means he has left uh, normal uh, community life, and he has isolated himself at the very end of the land. Where, so he's done such a big sacrifice because this is not really a life to live. It's a life of continuous, he's continuously on the watch, continuously exposed to danger and so on. Uh, that's called Al-Murabit. Al-Murabit is a guard, the person who guards the, 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 the borders of the Muslim land. Um, and you can also think about anything that applies to the same kind of person. Anybody who's dedicated his life totally for the sake of Allah Azza wa and deprived himself of the luxuries of life for the sake of Allah and died while doing that, it is mentioned that Allah will continue to count his deeds till the day of judgment for that kind of person. Now, uh, what of a pious scholar uh, that was um, incarcerated in prison because he's teaching good deeds by Allah? Yes. During his incarceration, all the all the things that he would have normally done are continuously being continuously being counted for him as if he is doing it, as if he is actually doing them. Now, uh, the hadith says, "If the the servant of Allah uh, 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 and residing in their in their home, so you can you know just like you mentioned, incarceration would be another thing that will deprive the person from what he was doing before. But still, that would be uh, another situation where Allah will kind of count for him whatever he was doing. Now, the second point is, uh, is uh, we will finish with this second point. Um, is it permissible for somebody who is sick to voice out what he is suffering from? Like to, to tell people, oh, I'm, my, my, my stomach is hurting or my head is hurting, uh, I'm in pain. Or is this something that goes against patients? Um, first of all, he should never do such a thing uh, as if he is complaining to the people, complaining Allah to the people. You know, complaining about Allah to the people. Oh, look what Allah has done to me. This is definitely uh, uh, something very evil to do because Allah is the one uh, who has given you everything you've enjoyed in life and maybe he's testing you, he is testing you now you cannot go and complain about Allah to the people that's not the intention that anybody should ever have nor should he say and voice out his pains or complaints um, out of lack of patience because he just uh, is not patient and he doesn't want to deal with this anymore that's also nothing, he shouldn't do that but if he is just informing the people around him 
about how he is feeling so that maybe nobody would bother him or maybe they would bring him the medication or something like that or maybe somebody is sick as well and you want to tell them that you are also sick so as to comfort that person well, I'm having, you know, my leg is hurting. Well, I also, my leg is also hurting. Oh, I'm having surgery. I've had surgery as well, and my leg is still hurting. This is not complaining about Allah. This is comforting, comforting your brother. That's all, that's all permissible. I'll read a hadith to you on this matter. Um, <clears throat> um, um, one time, Say, Sayyidah Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, said, wa ra'sa, said, oh, my head, I have a headache. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ ذَاكَ وَلَوْ كَانَ وَأَنَا حَيٌّ فَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكِ وَأَدْعُ لَكِ he was, he was joking her. He says to her, uh, uh, if you die, if you die while I'm still alive, you'll have the opportunity for me making istighfar for you and making dua for you. So, <laughs> so that was a joke. And he was saying, uh, you know, don't worry. Even if you die, I'm here. I will make dua for you. <laughs> um, and then she was, <laughs> she, she, maybe she didn't like it. She says, وَا um, He says, woe to me. Uh, inni la tuhib mawti. He says, it seems like you want me to die. <laughs> oh, tuhib mawti means you would love to see me dead. Tuhib min al-hub. He said, walau kana thak la dhalilta akhira yawmika mu'arrisan bi ba'di azwajik. And she says, it seems that you, you wish for my death. And if that actually happens, which uh, you would bury me in the, in the morning. At the end of the day, you will be uh, uh, spending the rest of your day with one of your wives. <laughs> which means you wouldn't care about me. <laughs> um, actually, at that point, he was very sick. He was actually sicker uh, than her. And that was the time when he was so sick. This is the, uh, the illness in which he actually died. So he was uh, much, much sicker, but he never told her how sick he was. He says, Bal ana wa He says, if you want the reality, if you want what is the truth, I'm, 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 my, ha- my head is hurting even more than you. لقد هممت أو أردت أن أرسل إلى أبي بكر وابنه وأعهد أن يقول القائمون وتمنى المتمنون ثم قلت يا أبا الله ويدفع المؤمنون أو يدفع الله ويأبى المؤمنون. The meaning is that he says, I'm so sick that. Uh, um, I, I, I almost wanted to call Abu Bakr, means her father, and his son, um, because he wanted to appoint Abu Bakr as his successor. So, he, uh, which means that he he feels so sick that he felt that he was going to die. So he says, "I'm almost at the verge of calling Abu Bakr to appoint him openly as my successor." But then I said to myself. <clears throat> Uh, well, he says, I have to appoint him as my, as my successor so that nobody would look up to that position except him. He wanted him and nobody else to be the successor but him. He says, I almost wanted to do that. But then I said to myself, uh, uh, this is what Allah wants. Allah wants him to be the success, successor so Allah will make it happen. And the believers will not accept except Abu Bakr. So he felt that he didn't have to, you know, do it openly or make an open will. Uh, and, 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 or an announcement to appoint him as his successor. And indeed, this is exactly, this is exactly what happened. And also, when he was sick, um, he was um, uh, he, uh, almost like he was shaken or very, uh, uh, he had a strong fever. And uh, she said to him, it seems that you are very sick. Uh, he says, yes, uh, I, my sickness or my illness is as intense as, uh, has a double intensity of any other man. Which means when I get sick, um, I, ha- I suffer double the, what anybody else would suffer, subhanAllah. Uh, she said to him, uh, that's actually Ibn Mas'ud, his Sahaba. Ibn Mas'ud, qala, uh, laka ajran. He says, is it because you get double the reward? Qala, naam. He says, this is, this is why it is like that. Naam, ma'am, ma'am. And then he mentioned that every believer, whatever happens to them, uh, Allah would expiate uh, their, um, their, or atone their sins. Does it... No. Actually, also follow that the, the prophet feels the pang of death than ordinary people. <clears throat> um, how much he felt of the pain of death? Uh, we don't know that part, but we know that um, he did have some kind of uh, suffering. 
during death and he used to put his hand in the water and you know try to lessen the fever or the heat or the pain by wiping his head uh, with the water and he would say uh, la ilaha illallah inna lil mawti sakarat he says uh, la ilaha there's no god but allah uh, the, the the death does have a big toll on the on the human body or a big suffering to, to it now he stopped he stop what now. is the life in barza what does it look like we have not treated that <coughs> topic at all. Yeah, that's a big topic, and that would actually require maybe uh, long, long lessons or many sessions. Um, it, does, it wouldn't fall under under uh, the Islamic law, of course. It right. would fall more under uh, the, the part of belief or aqidah uh, in the al al-akhir, because it is the beginning of al al akhir Maybe something like this would be a better, a better uh, uh, place for that. An occasion would be maybe uh, Jum'ah, khutbah, because that's something that concerns everybody. No. Now, stop here. No.